Ahoy hoy, and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and uh, today we're going to talk about how you're wrong about the SCP Ethics Committee. Now, a lot of you probably haven't given too much consideration to the Ethics Committee because Series 1 uh, style SCPs, and I'm not saying one way or the other what you are a fan of, but Series 1 SCPs tend to look at the Ethics Committee as sort of a, what's the word? a vestigial organ <laughs> it's the appendix of the, of the scp foundation i mean it's there it has a purpose maybe but it would be just as easy to cut it out as it would be to have it in there so when it comes to the ethics committee it's been around since almost the very beginning and the idea of the ethics committee even just the name of it is sort of a joke right so you've got the scp foundation this giant bureaucratic uh, piece of nonsense for lack of a better way to put it and they do whatever they want to for science they run <laughs> run head first into scps and shouting for science and the ethics committee even by its name think about that Instead of being like a prescriptive, like a, like a guy that says, you can't do this, like there's no human resources dude. There's a whole committee that has to meet and say, hey, you can't do that. Okay, well, let's file the paperwork so that we can get out of the way. All right, we filed the paperwork, but we're going to have to have a vote on it now. All right, we had a vote on it. Now we need to have more paperwork filed for the vote that we had yesterday. And then we're going to hold another vote to send the articles of ethics violations to the site. And then, then they're going to, then they're going to have an opportunity to respond and give us uh, their reasons for doing it. Then we have to have another vote. You know, it's the, it's a committee, right? It's, it's rule by committee. The whole thing is a joke. Even the name of it is sort of meant to be like, oh, they're incredibly ineffective. And early on in the SCP Foundation's history, the idea that the ethics committee is super ineffective is sort of ingrained in the, in the, the into the texture of the site. And then comes, well, let's see if we can find the exact article. I have it up here. How old is this is the real question. Like, when did this come out? Ah, 2011. About three, three and a half-ish years. Actually, no, it's about three years since the beginning of the SCP Wiki. Like, the Wiki Wiki, not some of the earlier stuff that, that existed off of Wikidot. Came the Ethics Committee orientation. Now, there had been a rising sort of idea that maybe the Ethics Committee isn't as uh, hapless as they appear before this, but... Uh, Vocht wrote the Ethics Committee orientation, and kind of people went a little crazy about it for a long time. It's very highly rated. It's one of the highest rated uh, tales on the site. Well, technically it's an orientation, but orientations and tales are the same thing. It's rated uh, almost plus 1,500, uh, and tales don't usually get that high. It's not very long, but in it... The idea is that, you know, you've been reassigned to the Ethics Committee. It's a second person story that literally is like, hey, you, you've uh, you've been told that you have to join the Ethics Committee. Sucks to be you, but not for the reasons you think. And then goes into this sort of thing is like, imagine for a second and you think your first response to the committee that approves an ethics committee that approves 110 Montauk cannot be very ethical. Whereas the ethics committee orientation is essentially telling you the committee that approved 110 Montauk cares very, very deeply about ethics and they approved it anyway. And that is sort of where the ethics committee turned from being a joke, although it's still sort of a joke. I mean, it, depending on who's writing it, it can still come in as a bit of a joke. But that's where the ethics committee turned from being just a joke to being something that could be considered very serious and important on the wiki. Now, the ethics committee is uh, something that's particularly close to my heart because the author avatar that I have on the SCP wiki who I write stories for and other people write stories for is a member of the ethics committee. And when I first started, I don't know. I think there are a couple more now when I first started, like 
there was no ethics committee members that were like major characters on the SCP wiki. I thought to myself, I mean, openly going to admit when you see a niche that's unfilled, you fill it. Nobody was, no characters were part of the ethics committee. So I made my character part of the ethics committee, which gave other people an excuse to put them in their stories and so on and so on. Um, and eventually, I mean, I've written multiple SCPs based on, uh, based on that. I believe, let's see here. Uh, and to this, I, I'd say one of my favorites is, and to this day, she still can't breathe, which is about, um, it, it's not technically an ethics committee. I guess it's not really an ethics committee. It is sort of an ethics committee story, but not really sort of like where Sumerian was bef just before he joined the ethics committee and kind of what he felt and where he was in, in his life uh, there's multiple stories where he's just in the setting that's his job not it may not be the focus of the story but that's sort of what's going on but the for me at the very least and let's see if I can find it on my list here because I have a lot of tales okay it's way down here all right <laughs> for me uh the most important part in the uh my for creating who Sumerian is on the scp wiki and part of that his identity as ethics committee member is and this is going to sound funny the orientation for the pasta physics department now pataphysics is an actual department on the scp wiki so the orientation for the and when i wrote this it was a super popular like thing for people to write for so i i made a little bit of a pun on the title an orientation for the pasta physics department and in it, we start to explore how, and this is very specific and very focused. There are other elements too, but I decided to pick a, pick a lane and just go down that road. And that's the importance of food to maintaining morale for not just the employees, but for the SCPs themselves. Because there's a lot of sentient SCPs on the SCP Wiki. And the old version of the ethics committee would just be like, eh, feed them gruel, who gives a crap, right? But my version of the ethics committee, and it evolves from the ethics committee orientation as well, is that the ethics committee is very committed to, like, ethical treatment, <laughs> the ethical treatment of anomalies. People for the ethical treatment of anomalies should be its own GOI. Although technically the serpent's hand would uh, fulfill that niche, but regardless. <laughs> people for the ethical treatment of anomalies pete <laughs> pete no that's still <laughs> that's still pita <laughs> it's like p-e-t-a wait <laughs> oh my god anyway um, that's off topic <laughs> but the this dives into food and you might be like what do you mean food what's that got to do with the ethics well Think about any time you've been in a depressed state, just you're not feeling great or like actually experiencing depression. And think about the importance of like everything in your life, what you have to look forward to. And sometimes it's just pizza day, right? And so what this goes into is the first of all, it talks about the ramifications of bad food and how the mental state of our SCPs is incredibly important. And it, it makes it clear this is just a single component of a many faceted approach to taking care of sentient anomalies. But it talks about the failures in the past, how things have changed and how things are going to get better in the future. And also it's speaking directly to a bunch of chefs and cooks and just in general food prep people. Uh, whose job is going to be to take care of not just the site's staff's uh, food needs, but also the uh, sentient anomalies as well. And talking about how you have to m measure and weigh the risks associated with, say, even... It uses an example. It's a very specific example, but when you're a writer, you can create a very specific example. <laughs> it uses the, of somebody who, when in pain, causes earthquakes, right? So... If you give them foods that could cause pain, like ice cream, that's a problem. So you have to weigh those sorts of things, like how important is ice cream to this person? Is it their favorite food? You know, uh, and so you go from that and you kind of examine what you can do and what you can't do. 
and try and keep people um and try and keep people happy right and that's just a base level like single segment of ethics committee uh ethics committee responsibilities because essentially what the scp foundation is is i think you can use the line what's the line here you will still run into old school foundation staff who treat the objects under our care as prisoners they both are and are not that because we are not jailers we are caretakers most of these people have done nothing to deserve any punishment or imprisonment. They are in containment for their and the world's safety, but they should be treated with gentle dignity and respect. And that's sort of the core idea. And again, this is a tiny sliver. This, there's going to be stuff like clothing. There's going to be stuff like entertainment. And it mentions slightly that there is an entertainment section as well. Like, do you give what kind of movie? Is there going to be a movie night for, say, uh, anomalies that it's okay for them to have a movie night? Is it, it, You continue on, so on and so on and so on. Sort of my idea is that the Ethics Committee has evolved, right? Like, there is, people who are Series 1 fans only may see the Ethics Committee as this ridiculously silly organization. Or, rarely, because of the Ethics Committee orientation uh, uh, tale, may see it as this dark, shadowy, super powerful organization. I feel like it's probably closer to that than it is the ridiculous whatever, but it's not that. I feel like that's too far. I feel like it's got to be more of a human resources style. <laughs> and, and and in fact, uh, human resources is under the ethics committee's purview and in, in my own version of the SCP wiki, because everyone's got their own head cannons for how things work. Um, so, yeah, the human resources department and the ethics committee are very closely interlinked because they must they have to be. <laughs> anyway, I could go on for days and days. because This is like my this is my area of interest. I could go on for days and days about this and, and without even once having to talk about what is and isn't ethical behavior, because that's incredibly, incredibly subjective. You might think that it's an objective choice, but it really isn't like, again, it's when you look at 110 Montauk and, and there's a lot of problems with the article that that comes from, but just looking at it from the perspective of how ethical it is, your approach matters. If you see the ethics committee as so ineffectual that they allow 110 Montauk to happen, then that then your view on the SCP ethics committee is, I believe, wrong. But if you view it instead as the ethics committee knows the weight and seriousness of 110 Montauk, knows the ethical implica implications, and despite wanting to provide the most ethical of options, has decided that, that 110 Montauk is it. That says so much more and is so much more interesting of a, a track to take. And that's the reason why the Ethics Committee orientation is rated at like almost plus 1500. It's such an interesting take on it. It takes what your core idea of it is and just flips it all the way around and part of that's why you're wrong about the ethics committee anyway thank you very much for watching if you like the new setup let me know in the comments down below i know th I, i'm thinking about ways to illuminate these permanently the important thing to me about my videos is that i can just turn the camera on and go so having it set up as it is right now like that camera can stay there this microphone is on a swivel i can move it over and over it's fine but um I don't know if it looks better with the lights on in the back because that kind of I looked at the thing and it looks like it kind of washes me out, uh, but I could still light those things <laughs> somehow. I'll figure it out. I'll put something up on the wall. Maybe if you like the video, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that. So you're notified when I upload new videos and then head on over to patreon.com forward slash d sumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has including dr j redacted who has pledged at a hundred dollars sinjariki who has pledged at a hundred dollars and morgan who has pledged at forty dollars and if you'd really like to help support the channel and yeah i'm shilling for so much now see this poster here you could get this poster you can get a shirt that says you're wrong about this t-shirt. You can get a hoodie that says you're wrong about this hoodie. There's so much merchandise in a carousel right underneath this video. If you enjoy the video, 
go to the carousel, buy some stuff. And ultimately, no matter what you do, just thanks for letting me know that I'm not alone out here. And I will see you all again on Thursday.